Hey guys, D Mike here with another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. Things are about to get real. Abu the Thief has caused the Cave of Wonder to erupt into hot magma and lava. So, the story so far is pretty canonical compared to the movie. This is the level that, when I remembered as a kid, for some reason was like exceptionally brutal, but I Having played this as an adult, I guess it's not really that bad. This was supposed to be kind of like the elephant graveyard of Lion King levels, which is really tough. But I guess this one's not so bad. I guess, I don't know, maybe Capcom threw me a bone here. But one of the one of the themes of this level that I think you'll see very clearly is that collecting gems is very important, especially the red ones going through. Obviously, that's kind of like the hidden collectible thing. But taking damage to get those iframes and save yourself in certain cases to get the red gems and just not to fall into the lava that's, is actually really useful. There's a couple moments here where things get a little hairy with the frame rate. But use those iframes to your advantage. They're actually pretty long in this game, so it's beneficial. I think it's a little strange though that we're trying to escape this gigantic volcanic... Gigantic volcanic? That should be a name of a band. This volcanic cave, but we have time to have a little, a little snack, maybe some brie and a baguette. But there's once again another example of using the iframes to collect the gem. These fireballs though are really annoying and they come out of nowhere, I don't like them, and they're very turdish. But yeah, use these little, these little platforms on the ground to catch a gem or just do some gymnastics, I guess that's what that looked like. Aladdin was absolutely flipping out for that gem. It's kind of a big deal. But yeah, this is one of those levels where I guess on the surface it seems tough just because the music is kind of insane and there's a lot going on with the fire brewing all around. They did a great job with the with the layers, with the magma in the foreground and then in the background it looks like it's kind of flowing through. It's really neat. Some good, good sprite work. But yeah, you can jump on those platforms as many times as you want to. This is another level exceptionally so, where having the sailcloth is a huge boost. Slows you down, gives you a chance to have a little bit of a breather and kind of figure out where you're going. One of the things that I think is tough when I'm playing through this is that I don't entirely know what the hitbox is of the red gem, so it's kind of tough to see, like, am I going to, you know, if I touch a little bit of it with Aladdin, will I get it or not? But that's the first phase. Not too bad. This episode, as you can see, based on the length of it, is a little bit longer. I realized that the last episode, having only gone through one stage, wasn't really substantial. It was only about six-ish minutes, and I know that these videos are meant to be shorter, but I feel like that's a little bit too short. So today, you're getting double the content. You're welcome. It's a big deal. I'm sticking it out there for the fans. So here, Abu, Aladdin, Magic Carpet, flying through this cave. I kind of wish that this level itself, this one's a little tough, I guess. I wish it was a little longer. It just seems very brief, and if, you know, once you get the muscle memory down for it, you'll be fine. You gotta stay towards kind of like the, the right third of the screen to really avoid all the flying rocks and then the lava surges. But, guys, I have a surprise. Every red gem, I did that for you. For the fans. For those of you watching, all of those gems are collected for you guys. So we outrun the lava. We take back the lamp. Oops, spoilers. Now we take back the lamp. Still spoilers. Now we take back the lamp. And in that lamp is none other than this blue guy here. It's actually um, the original member of the Blue Man Group, the musical percussionists. Quick shout out to Robin Williams, rest in peace. He was one of the premier voice actors of my childhood. So here we go. We're inside the lamp now. This level is a little trickier. It is more in the platforming, risky kind of realm. The one thing I dislike about what this game does is that in between stages, it doesn't refill your hearts. 
it does give you some health power-ups, which are nice. There's a little, there's another piece of bread in case you wanted to have some cheese and crackers while you're inside some old antiques. That's what you do, right? This seems like a fever dream for someone. I'm not entirely sure what those pots with, like, feet are. If that's, like, maybe in this era of time, if those are supposed to be, like, drones. Because, I mean, birds aren't real, so... Um, maybe this is kind of like that. Also, if you, um, if you move to the right of that pot collecting that gem, you will die. So that's, that's a pretty good example of what not to do. You're welcome for that little tutorial. I think that those bird pots, whatever they are, were in the first stage. So bringing them back seems a little strange. I mean, I guess it makes sense more now in this stage than the other one. I'm not entirely sure what the bird pots were doing, just kind of hanging out in the streets of Agrabah, but here inside this schizophrenic adventure inside this lamp. I do like the fact that they have a bunch of glowing genie signs in the background, just in case you forgot who, who we're dealing with here. Surprisingly, this was not part of the movie, and I think that it would have been really cool. There is a scene where Aladdin and and Abu get to meet Genie, and then he, you know, they have a little bit of fun together, but this isn't in it. Also, a uh, second gem. Make sure you grab back onto the platform if you can. That's another example of what not to do. That's one of the things that I realized as I was playing through this, is I start to get a little low on lives, so I've got to be a little more conservative. I'm gonna try to collect more gems. Don't forget, collecting all these gems does get us a benefit. We'll find out what that is in four of them. But as I play through this game more and more, get to these levels and get some practice, I start to realize that I start to make more risky judgments and moves when I play. I think part of that's just because I get so used to what I'm doing that I'm less patient. But one of the things that you're going to have to be, especially in the second half of this stage, is incredibly patient. It's a bit of an auto-scroller. Spoilers. Once again, Sailcloth saves us, but there you go. 100 gems, an extra hit, that's very good. Having as many hit points as possible is fantastic. We love that. So here's where the patience kicks in. I almost off to myself, that's not good. So this is very RNG dependent. I didn't quite understand what was going on. Genie is going to be making platforms for us. Also, another thing that's kind of a but in this level itself is that there's no real checkpoint, so unlike the previous level, which gives you one like half of the way through it, and it's not really that long, so I'm not entirely sure why they did that, but there's a there's a checkpoint halfway through. This one doesn't have that, so this stage is broken up into three levels of semi-difficulty, I guess, or maybe it's two levels. I guess it depends upon how you want to look at it. But having the sailcloth is super good. Genie here is going to be making us some platforms to help us out. That sprite of his is actually kind of terrifying. And there's a boo and magic carpet in the background having a good old time, maybe. At least one of them is. I think a boo is probably going to need some counseling after all of this is said and done. Maybe see a an animal psychologist. So here we go. Now we're back on to some ledges, which are really fun if you can swing into them the right way. That's a mechanic that I won't miss, although it's in all parts of the game, so you gotta make do with what you got. So here's part de. I guess there are three. Yeah, there's three. So we have these weird little genie balloons. You can grab onto the bottom of them with the little handhold or you can jump on the top and they explode. This entire level with as much, you know, genie examples or whatever you want to call those. Um, homages to genie. Feels a little presidential if you know what I'm saying. It's kind of all over the place. A little self-glorification. No, don't know anybody who did that. So we're going to keep jumping on these things. Those act like the stalagmites did in the last level, so you can jump on them as many times as you want. Catch yourself another scarab. 
Not entirely sure what tornadoes have to do with anything. I think Capcom just took a little, uh, some liberties with this one. Not sure how I feel about people finagling my Disney films, trying to have a little bit of revisionist history here with my childhood. Not about that at all, just kidding, that's fine. This makes it a little fun. I'm assuming that because the, the movie itself isn't super long, you know, it's a 90s animated film, they had to stretch it out a little bit. So we didn't get the Scarab in the first level, although technically we did, but it has to be in the life that you use to complete the level, so it doesn't count, which I think is dumb and very turdish of them. So for some reason, the Scarab is located in the second of the three stages, or the three levels of this stage. So get yourself a little bit of a power up. So I did figure out what all of these do now. So the star, that gives you a another uh, continue. The heart will refill your hearts. The lives are obviously pretty self-explanatory. And then the genie will actually give you an extra heart of damage. So I guess the health refill is nice, but kind of pointless. Whatever, we'll take what we can get. That's fine. Beggars can't be choosers, I guess, when you're playing Aladdin. This is a pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of game. Absolutely. Rags to riches. So we've got more uh, more shenanigans going on inside this lamp. A little bit of non-consensual tongue work. Not a fan of that. Genie, need to keep your your appendages to themselves, no matter what they may be. I imagine they having to walk on like a tongue would be really disgusting. I'm not entirely sure what a genie's tongue would be like though, so maybe answer that in the questions for yourselves. What do you think a genie's tongue would be like? You know? Would it be... I mean, it's obviously something that Aladdin can walk on unless this is just magical because we're within the lamp. But uh, speaking of tongues, fun fact, got to feed a giraffe recently. That was neat. Went to the old animal farm, the zoo. Fed uh, Lance the giraffe. He had escaped from Toys R Us. Brought him back. They have black tongues, and they're very slimy, and they are able to just snatch stuff right away from me. It's like a gigantic furry long horse chameleon. So fed him some lettuce. He was a happy boy. Had a great time. Recommend if you got a zoo, go. If you can feed a giraffe, do it. They will love you for it. Become best friends. Give him a little snack. So yeah, these little boxes, we're going to be doing some platforming on those, bring the balloons back. I'm not entirely sure what this is supposed to be, but it is a little creepy not having pupils anymore. And going back to the last stage, I forgot to bring this up, but they have those trampolines that you jump on at the end. That, I think, is the same sound effect as the trampolines from Super Mario World. I could be wrong, but it sounds very similar. But, uh, yeah, that's it. That wasn't too hard for some reason. I remember this being a lot more difficult as a kid, but then again, I was a kid and I sucked at games. So a lot better now, way more professional, doing it for the fans, everybody. That's two stages of Aladdin down. Hopefully you enjoyed yourselves. This has been Super Nintendo Sundays. I've been D-Mike. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.